and welcome back to another video. Before we get started, go ahead and click subscribe if you haven't already. So today we're going to be talking about a special, one-of-a-kind car that Elvis owned. Let's jump in. This 1960 Cadillac Series 75 Fleetwood limousine has had quite an interesting journey. So Elvis bought the limo for around $10,000, but you know it wasn't his style to drive a basic car. He wanted this car decked out and knew just the man for the job. He brought it to California customizer George Barris. Barris was famous for unique cars such as the Batmobile and the Munster Coach. Since Elvis was prepared to pay for this customization, and I mean pay, the total came out to around $65,000. No expense was spared, and George added the most bells and whistles. So let's talk about what was done to this car. Starting with the color. It was covered in 40 coats of, quote, pure diamond dust pearl, which consists of crushed diamonds and pure fish scales from the Orient rubbed to a mirror-like luster, end quote. Every piece of exterior metal and trim, such as the hubcaps, were plated in 24 karat gold. The top of the car was lengthened and is made from imported gold frieze from France with pearl buttons. Everything on the car is unique, but one of my favorite parts is the rear windows. The panels were replaced with portholes with little circular privacy covers. Now let's take a look at the interior that is covered in gold and white. There are gold lame drapes covering all of the windows. The floor is covered in white mouton throughout the space, and the rear seat is covered in this pleated white naga hide. Communication is key, so this limousine had a gold flake telephone. It also has an intercom, so the back seat could communicate with the front via a cute little tiny microphone. Of course it had air conditioning, but something else cool was the small but impressive bar area. It had a small refrigerator and also a freezer that could freeze ice cubes in just two minutes located underneath the TV. There are six replica gold records of Elvis's music inside affixed to the roof of the limo. And who needs a radio when you have a record player on board? This car featured a 10 record RCA record player that automatically changes. There's also a tape deck and Elvis was riding around way ahead of his time with a gold plated swivel TV. This limo didn't just have things for entertaining, but also so many items for grooming. Elvis enjoyed a gold vanity case that included a gold electric razor, hair clipper, and even a shoe polisher. He spent so much money to deck out this car, but likely didn't use it all that much. It's rumored that since it was so showy, fans might have damaged it wanting a souvenir. So Elvis was done with this car after just a few years. In the mid 1960s, Colonel Tom Parker convinced RCA to buy this car, where it was then put on tour for a couple of years. Here is Elvis posing with his custom limo in 1967. From there, it traveled overseas to Australia for a charity. In January of 1968, the limo was displayed at a hotel in Sydney, then went on to several other stops where fans could buy a ticket to see this little piece of Elvis. This event was to raise money for the Benevolent Society of New South Wales. I read about this charity, which was founded in the 1800s and is actually still around today. They do some amazing work with children, people with disabilities, as well as elderly care. I even read that Elvis might have filled the car with stuffed animals for this occasion, but that's unverified. This car was seen by nearly 400,000 people and raised over $100,000 for their charity. So where is it now? In the late 1970s, it was then donated to the Country Music Association Hall of Fame in Nashville, Tennessee, for the opening of a new wing of their building. They initially displayed it with the top open. 
Here it is being carefully driven to its new home in April of 1977. There it stayed for 24 years, but the current Country Music Hall of Fame was built in 2001, and all of their items, including Elvis's limo, were moved to the new location. You've probably seen it on display, and if you have, you'll recall that it's not on the ground level. While constructing the massive new museum, builders left a hole in the side of the building precisely for Elvis's car. Here we can see just how nerve-wracking it was when a crane carefully lifted the car up to its new home. And that is it! What was your favorite part? Let me know in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for watching and please subscribe for more adventures.